if you work law enforcement in Grand Rapids, Michigan, or Kent County, which is a county that incorporates Grand Rapids, Michigan, and a whole lot of other cities, you need to get out now. It's time to go. I understand that you may have your career anchored in that area, but it's simply not worth it. And now I'm gonna explain why. Ladies and gentlemen, please like this video, subscribe to my channel, and share this video with anybody that lives in a county or area that is ran by an overzealous prosecutor. I believe the information in this video could potentially save their career and potentially keep them away from prison. Can't make any guarantees. Now, if they work private security or law enforcement, and I'm sorry that it has to come down to this. This is, this is literally the 26th time that I'm filming this video. I've been sick the past week or so. I'll cough, sniff, or sneeze over the video, and it'll disrupt the video, or I'll leave some important information out, so I'll have to keep refilming it over and over and over again. But I want to make it right. I want the information to come out as clear as possible, so I'm going to try my best this time. A couple months ago, Grand Rapids, Michigan, a police officer attempted to pull over the suspect who was driving a vehicle that had mismatched license plates. This could potentially be a serious crime. Suspects of crimes conceal license plates for a variety of reasons. Number one, they're about to commit a felonious act or a violent crime and they don't want to be identified. They put on different license plates. Number two, registration is not current. They steal a license plate, <clears throat> excuse me, or they get a license plate from their own vehicle that is, that's current. In some states, this could be a felony. In some states, it could be a misdemeanor. Another reason why a suspect would conceal a license plate, the real license plate, is because the vehicle is stolen, which is the felony in most states. If I put another license plate on it, if the officer runs a plate, it's not going to come back to a stolen vehicle. Now, if they're smart, they'll steal a license plate from a similar vehicle, but the suspect in this crime was not the smartest person. Officer attempted to pull him over, failed to yield for a little bit, eventually pulled over, started to get out of his vehicle. Officer ordered him inside of his vehicle, get back in your vehicle. Police officers will order you back in the vehicle so that you don't roam around and you don't become more dangerous to them when you're about to, see if, if, if you're inside of your vehicle, if there's a gunfight, my gunfire or your gunfire is oriented in a, in a more narrower area. And we know more or less the area where we need to impact. If the person gets out, the, the gunfight becomes more dynamic. This person can move around, run, go to a barricaded position, and it could just become an awful day. It gives them numerous orders to do that. Instead, the suspect gets out, he bails. And the officer catches up to him, gives him multiple commands to give up, to surrender. He does not comply. These are lawful orders, by the way. Officer deploys his taser a total of two times, and it looks like the taser connection was not effective. So before we dwell further into this, I'm going to explain to you how the taser works. And even if you've been trained on the taser, Please listen to this video to its entirety. There's some very important information. There's some information that I didn't learn or that I didn't know about the taser until 10 years after I carried the taser. After we talk about that, we'll, 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 we'll talk about the Grand Rapids, Michigan officer once again. But we need to understand how this taser works because knowing how it works is going to have bearing on perhaps your case and other cases. So... This is a, this is basically your blue gun. This is, for the YouTube analyst, this is not a gun. This is not even a real taser gun. Okay, this, this is all plastic. Okay, it's all plastic, nothing racks back. Okay, all plastic. 
this cartridge is removed from a real taser. Okay? When you remove the cartridge, there's these two, there's these two probes. I believe that maybe, um, I think it's this side or this side. But anyhow, there, there's, some, there's some probes. Um, there, there could be four, I don't, I don't think so. But there's at least two. If these probes make contact with you, it will not cause neuromuscular incapacitation. It, what will happen is 50,000 volts of electricity will be, will be um, conducted between th this probe and then this probe. So when you place the stun, the, I'm sorry, the taser against a human body, the person submits to custody or the person gives up because of the pain that's involved. Okay, this is your dry stun mode or the stun gun mode. This does not cause neuromuscular incapacitation. Now, let me discuss what neuromuscular incapacitation is. Neuromuscular incapacitation is the involuntary jerking of the muscle. It's, it's your violent muscle spasms. The person cannot control their muscles. It, that's why it's, it, it's involuntary. It, you start contract, everything starts contracting. So this here, and you guys be very careful with these cartridges. I actually poked myself on my 24th video, so be careful. And by the way, this is not deployed um, attempting to take down a suspect of any crime. This is, by the way, this is my personal cartridge, and um, I use this for, for training. So there's no bloodborne pathogens on here. Okay. So when the, when the cartridge is inserted into here, you, you press the trigger, there's some type of spark that's created. The spark ignites the cartridge. Cartridge is expelled through nitrogen gas. And you see these wires here? These are called your taser wires. These wires conduct electricity. This is what flies out of the, the doors here. So previously there was, there was two taser doors, or they call them blasting doors or blast doors. Um, and they, they basically, they'll blow off or they'll open up. Um, the probes are on two sides, here and here. So they come out of here. They're, so, so in the beginning, they're actually all the way over here, all the way over here. With the nitrogen gas, it's expelled, okay? It travels, and when it impacts your body, okay? So let's just say, and I'm not showing you where to, where to aim, um, just for convenience, because of the camera angle, I'm gonna show you um, some areas, just, just for all intents and purposes, not, not to show you where to actually hit. But let's just say, if this probe stuck in me right here, and then another probe went down to the bottom of my leg. Um, any area between up here and my leg, that any area between the two probes, that area is going to conduct electricity, a lot of electricity, and create those involuntary muscle spasms. Okay, if I make an effective, effective hit. The closer, okay, the closer the spread, the less involuntary jerking of the muscles in other areas. So if I get struck here, my legs are not expected to become, I'm not expected to have involuntary muscle contractions with my, with my legs or my, my stomach or my back because this area here is being, is being affected here, okay? The farther you step away, okay, the wider the spread. Law enforcement um, generally has, I think it's 25 feet. Of spread you um, civilians can buy 15 I think security can also get 25 and I, I think the farthest cartridges you can get is 35 feet <clears throat> okay so let's discuss what happened as we know the officer attempted to deploy this taser two times with the taser 7 so this is a x26 <clears throat> with the taser 7 you can actually fire a total of two times without having to reload with this ta with this taser if I fired it, okay, the cartridge would be gone. Um, I would have to put throw another cartridge in here, okay, in order to have another taser deployment. <clears throat> With the taser seven, like the Grand Rapids officer had, it just bam, bang, okay, or 
press press and um, you'd have two cartridges <clears throat> officer gets on the floor they struggle he struggles with the suspect he tells the suspect numerous times let go of the taser drop the taser and he doesn't he, he actually he actually gets a hold of the he actually gets a hold of the taser you guys so the officer is struggling for his life for 90 seconds 90 seconds Officer decides to put the person out. Uh, puts an effective round in the back of the suspect's head. It looks awful on video. I don't think that helped him. But the fight was ended. It, it, it worked. It stopped the fight. Lights, lights were out. No more movement. Okay. Um, I want to make it clear that the suspect died as a result of the suspect's actions. His own actions amounted to his own pearl, to his own death. Okay, the officer didn't wake up one day and say, hey, you know what? I'm going to go kill somebody today. Okay, an officer that wakes up, that wakes up in 2022 that decides that is insane. Especially, uh, like I said, especially 2022. Now the issue is, can I shoot somebody that got a hold of my taser? Guys, um... Somebody gets a hold of your taser. <clears throat> if there was already a taser deployment, um, you're gonna have these wires dangling around while you're fighting with while you're fighting to regain control over the situation. <clears throat> Excuse me. If you touch both wires at the same time. You are going to have neuromuscular incapacitation. Imagine, you're the officer. You're fighting with the suspect. The taser, the taser wire is all over the place. If you happen to touch this wire and this wire at the same time, and there's a very good chance that that could happen, okay? You're going to have the worst taser, taser deployment ever. Um, you're going to have the best electricity conducted through you in the best way possible because it's going to start up here and then it's it's going to travel to where the other probes at you guys that is your whole body okay with the law enforcement tasers you're going to be you're going to be stuck like this for 15 seconds while the suspect gain controls over you and kills you with your own gun think about that let that sink in you lawfully deploy your taser you miss, you're fighting with the suspect. So if the suspect is able to get a hold of your taser and actually press this trigger here, he's gonna activate the taser system, okay? And if you're touching both wires, or these, if these both wires are pressed somewhere along your body, you're gonna be incapacitated for at least 15 seconds. If he keeps pulling that trigger, it's longer, it's longer and it's longer. That whole time, he could grab your gun from your holster and kill you with it. Now, <clears throat> if the if the cartridge is not in the taser, so we're assuming we're taking this out, if the suspect just drives up to you or drives his body towards you, press the trigger, now you have the dry stun mode. Basically, you're gonna be painful in that area but you might not be incapacitated throughout your whole body. Now, obviously, look at if the suspect is tasing this area here, not tasing, while conducting electricity with the with the dry stun mode, okay, I might not be able to get a hold, or I, I might not be able to use my strong hand for my firearm or for defensive purposes. Same thing with the, with this hand, you guys. Depending on where they're conducting electricity, so I want you to keep that in mind. And what I'm helping you do, do, doing, what I'm helping you do is establish justification if, just in case you need to use lethal force. Just giving you guys some, some options here. Some reasoning. Now, can you shoot, can you shoot somebody if the cartridge is removed and they're applying this to you? Can you shoot them? I would argue it depends. If you're in fear for your life and that fear is reasonable, then you'll be off the hook. But the problem, like I mentioned, is 
with the dry stun mode, that pain, that, um, that, that electricity conduction is concentrated in a certain area and you don't have, you don't, you don't have uh, muscular incapac incapacitation. Okay, you might have a little bit, but not total like you're conducting electricity if the probes were there. So you're gonna have more, you're gonna have a harder chance, more difficult chance explaining to a jury or court or, or, or investigator. Now, let's assume the cartridge is still in here. Even, look at, even if the wires don't make contact with you, if the suspect drives the taser to your body, okay, now look at, there's a wire here and a wire here. If it's pressed against your body, okay, but just like this, you guys, okay, he presses it, he presses it against your body, the two wires are still touching your body, you guys. You will have neuromuscular incapacitation in, in this area. In actual, in actual, I guess, a hack, if you ever tase anybody, let's just say you, you hit them with one probe and the other probe, you miss. If you actually walk up to them, like you're gonna dry stun them, and you press this against their body, you can actually complete the whole circuit. And you're gonna have that neuromuscular incapacitation. So, uh, you know, just keep that in mind, guys. If, if these two wires, if he drives up to you like this, and two wires make contact with you, okay, you might have neuromuscular incapacitation in, in this area here. Maybe not everywhere else. But my main concern is a, is a dangling wires. Now, guys, in the circumstance that I saw, Lethal force was justified, in my honest opinion. If I was in the same circumstance, I too would consider using lethal force. <clears throat> Excuse me. What else can you do? Well, you can run away, right? So after the struggle, remember, I'm fighting for 90 seconds. After the struggle, if I attempt to flee out of the danger zone of this taser, which is 25 to 35 feet, if I can flee... Then, then the taser is not effective within that range. The problem is, can I get to 25, 35 feet from going to a life and death struggle from that position? Can I do that? And the question or the answer is, I, I don't know. I was not involved in a 90 second fight. I don't think so. I don't think so. If, if you don't think so, lethal force should be on your mind. What else can you do? Can you use a baton? Maybe, but with the baton, I need to be within range, at least within within two feet distance. I mean, your batons are easy, 19 inches to, to 24 inches. Uh, some batons are 29 inches. So I need to close the distance. And when I close the distance, I'm jeopardizing myself. There's always that opportunity for the suspect to use a taser while I do that. Pepper spray? Okay, well, there's some pepper sprays that are flammable and you shouldn't be carrying those pepper sprays but if it's flammable um if the pepper spray gets on you and this person you know this person ignites a spark or creates a spark through the taser okay you could you could catch on fire can you go hand to hand sure you go hand to hand but when you go hand to hand there's always a chance that you're gonna touch two wires at once so what's the option again i'm 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 leaning towards lethal force. Um, guys, I want to hear your feedback. This, this is a dangerous situation for law enforcement and for private security. This prosecutor is trying to make a name for themselves. The, the chief of police is a rookie chief of police who doesn't stand behind the officers. And by the way, he came from Chicago. I believe this chief of, of police is a coward, in my honest opinion. If I was the chief of police in that situation... I wouldn't just throw my officer to the wolves, so to speak. And that's exactly what this chief did. Instead of getting out in public and saying that my officer did every single thing that he can in order to prevent himself from le using lethal force, and as a result of the suspect's actions, my officer had to take his life. My statement would revolve around those lines. Not just, hey, <laughs> city council, um, I am making a motion to remove this officer from the department 
to immediately terminate him, our seven-year veteran, who's been there longer than the chief. Chief doesn't do that. He goes to the, 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 the state patrol, I think the highway or Department of Justice for, for Michigan. I, I don't know, what the, I don't know what, the, what, what the name is. And he just feeds them to the wolves, you guys. And they find that there's probable cause. And this, and this person, this, person this, the, this officer is arrested, wrongfully arrested. And in the end, who's held accountable? Is the prosecutor held accountable? Of course not. The, the district attorney in that county who, want, who wants to press these charges, pursue this case, the only repercussion is he might not get elected next time. That's it. And he's literally dragging this officer on his back through a rose bush, back and forth, back and forth. Is the officer going to win? I believe so. Because I don't believe that he did anything wrong that day. The only thing he did wrong was show up to work in this, in this, in this environment. Whatever happens to law enforcement happens to private security, ladies and gentlemen. There's an ongoing trend right now for police commanders, police chiefs to throw their officers underneath the bus in order for their own benefit. There's a growing trend of prosecutors of prosecuting law enforcement officers. They prosecute law enforcement officers, they're going to come to you too if you're working private security. Let me know what you guys' thoughts are on this. What is your plan if a suspect gets a hold of your taser? You guys all take care. Please forward this video to others. Like, subscribe, share, comment. Looking forward to dialogue. You guys take care.